Hi, Andy Eastwood here, welcoming you back to the Octopus Ukulele Academy. And if you think I'm looking unusually smart today, well, that's because I'm in the middle of filming an online video concert for the Royal Variety Charity. But while the cameras are rolling and the lights are on, I thought it might be a good opportunity to dip into the mailbag and answer a couple of the questions you've been sending in for the Ask Andy video series. Thanks for sending them in. Stay tuned for my answers. Okay, so here's a question from Jackie Burke. Thanks for sending the question, Jackie. Can you quickly lay to rest the old question about whether children should use picks? If so, when and which ones are best to use? Okay, well, the short answer from me is no. I don't think I would recommend picks or plectrums, if you want to call them plectrums. Now, on the electric guitar, I always use a plectrum because they're steel strings and they really shred your fingers uh, if you try to strum them. But uh, on the uke, the strings are pretty soft. And actually the human finger, we're very lucky, it's pretty well designed for strumming a uke. Uh, the nail hits on the way down and uh, gives a nice crisp, sharp sound. And the padded part of the finger on the way up is a little softer, gives us a bit of light and shade in the tongue. Uh, so we don't really need plectrums unless they're for a specific musical effect that you're aiming for. But generally, I think no. Now it's interesting that you say, um, should children use picks? You specify children in the question, Jackie, and uh, maybe the thinking behind that is that they don't have the strength in their hands and fingers that adults do. Uh, and it's important to say that uh, really brute force and strength are not what we're aiming for uh, when we start to learn to strum the uke nicely. Uh, actually, the volume should come from the speed of the hand, not by hitting the strings too hard. And the other thing that springs to mind here is the angle of the nail. If you're finding that it's hurting uh, to hit the strings, you're probably at the wrong angle. You, what we really not need to be doing is skimming across with a very shallow angle on that nail so that it just has as little impact and therefore as little resistance as possible. Actually, it's pretty rare to find people using picks in the ukulele world. You may not be aware of that if you're new to the uke. I was at a big uh, ukulele festival just a couple of weeks ago with several hundred uke players and enthusiasts. I don't remember seeing anyone using a pick all weekend long. No doubt there would have been somebody. It does happen, but it's quite unusual. So my uh, answer on balance, thinking about it is, no, try not to bother. And really, we want to feel at one with the instrument. So anything that comes between your hand and the strings is a bit of a barrier, really. It's a bit like playing the piano with gloves on. Try to avoid it. Now, here we have a question from Jim Whitehead. Jim says, I find B flat and B minor chords difficult to place when I'm playing a fast song. Is there a way to make this easier? Thanks, Andy. Okay, thank you for the question, Jim. Let's have a think. Uh, B flat and B minor. And you say, when you're playing a fast song. Okay, well, a fast song is always gonna be harder to, to get to the chords and you, you have to really practice all those chord changes. No good practicing the chord on its own. Uh, it has to be practiced in the context, in other words, You've got to practice the chord that comes before it, then the chord you're finding difficult, then the one after it, so that you get it in some kind of musical context and you get the movement from one chord to the other. And when you practice that movement, do it slowly, make sure that your fingers, each finger is going exactly where it needs to go without any extraneous movement in between the, the first chord and the second, okay? So that's one point, uh, slow practice, and make sure that there's no extra movement going on. But I think there's more to it than this. Uh, you say the B flat chord and the B minor chord. Now these chords have a couple of things in common. They're both bar chords, partial bar chords. In other words, on the B flat, we're barring across two strings with the first finger. Some people play it barring right across all the strings. Some people just bar two. Either way, you have to have your hand at such an angle that the fingers are parallel to the frets. That's the rule with bar chords, okay? B minor is also a bar chord. Here you can bar all four strings, or you can just bar three. That will depend, again, on the context. But um, in both cases, you have to have your hand 
so that the fingers are parallel to the frets. That means getting the whole angle of your hand, wrist and arm correct. Now there's even more uh, to it because there's another similarity here with these two chords. Both of them have the third finger on the G string. Uh, so that one's there for the B flat, the B minor, it's there. So it could be that you're having trouble getting that third finger to exactly land where it needs to be on the G string. Now, what it's going to come down to inevitably is your hand, wrist and arm position. Because if your fingers are not landing where you want them to land easily, it probably means that everything else is in the wrong place. Don't give the fingers all the work to do. Don't forget these big muscles in the arm could very easily help you out. So you've got to find the position that your whole arm needs to be in. Now, uh, in this case, it could be that you are, in fact, I've got a strong suspicion because I've come across similar problems with a lot of students in the past. Uh, it could well be that your wrist is too far forward. I suspect maybe you need that wrist to come up like this uh, because if it's too far that way, this finger might be reaching around too far. A lot of guitarists have this problem when they switch from guitar to uke. They're used to having to reach further across the fingerboard. And the uke, of course, is that much smaller that everything has to move around this way. Now, I don't know if Jim's ever played guitar or not. Maybe it's not the case, but if other people are having a similar problem, it's worth mentioning this. Now, your fingertips should be able to just land. All you should have to do is plonk them down and they should land in the right place. If your hand, wrist and arm are in the correct position, they will do that. If your hand, wrist and arm are not in the correct position, they'll land somewhere else. So my biggest tip on this one is forget the fingers for a minute, take a look where everything else is because that could be what's causing the problem. So really what you've got to do is look at the chord before, look at the chord after, sort out those movements so that there's no extra movement going on slowing you down, but also check the hand positions on the B flat and the B minor chord uh, to check that nothing is um, preventing your fingers from easily getting to where they're trying to reach to. My suspicion is that it could well be that wrist that's bending the wrong way. So that's my first suggestion. Try altering the wrist position. Right, now we have a question from Sweden. It's great to hear from Sweden. The first ukulele festival I ever played at was in Gothenburg, Sweden. I had a great time, a great ukulele tradition over there. Uh, lovely to hear from you, Anders in Sweden. Hi Andy, and thank you for being a great inspiration to many ukulele players. Thank you for saying that. I wonder if you can say something about different tunings. In Sweden, where I'm learning to play ukulele, you usually learn to play it in D tuning. When I look at YouTube clips to improve my playing, I most often meet musicians with a different tuning. That is a bit frustrating. I mean, it's not a simple task to play in a different tuning from the one you were used to. Why has it become like this? Oh, well, why has it become like this? That's a difficult question to answer. I'm not sure I'll get a definite answer to that. But it's a very interesting point, and I'm glad you brought it up, Anders. Uh, when I started to play in the late 80s, I also was in D tuning. And in fact, I still play nearly all the time in D tuning. When we talk about D tuning, what we mean is A, D, F sharp, B. So in other words, each string, this is G, C, E, A, which we now call the standard. Each string is a, a two semitones higher making it A, D, F sharp, B. So when you play what you would think of as a C chord, that comes out as a D chord. Now, uh, it's a very nice tuning for a soprano uke. And when uh, ukes first uh, spread outside of Hawaii, the sopranos were the most popular, and all the literature that was printed back in the 1920s was 
given as standard tuning A, D, F sharp, B. And that's what I learned to play from when I started playing in the uh, 80s, late 80s, early 90s. All the books we could get back then, because the ukulele wasn't as popular as it is now, all the books we could get were reprints of old 1920s tutor books. And they all said A, D, F sharp, B tuning. And uh, actually, I love it. I, it's, it gives a very bright sound, which can arguably be nicer on a soprano uke and uh, in fact that's what the size was designed to be tuned as so uh, don't maybe don't bother with it so much on a concert or tenor size uke now i think it could be the the rising popularity of concert and tenor ukes that has brought people more towards C tuning now. When the ukulele had a big resurgence of popularity about 20 years ago, a lot of new literature was printed. And for some reason, somebody's personal choice maybe, or perhaps because the bigger size ukes were getting more popular, perhaps that's why it was all printed with C tuning as standard. Anyway, someone's at some point made this decision and it has taken over because as Anders rightly says, nearly all the teaching materials nowadays give C tuning as standard. Now, I would like people to give D tuning a try because it does give you a lovely bright sound on the soprano. You may like the sound, you may also find that the keys you're then playing in suit your voice a little bit better. So your C chord on a, on a C uke, tune everything two semitones higher, that will be a D chord. Your F chord will become a G chord and so on and so on. Uh, it doesn't take that much effort to get used to it, but if like poor Anders, you are used to playing in D, it might be worth having another uke in C so that you can play along with those tutorial videos. Uh, a lot of people I know still love D tuning. And give it a chance. It wasn't so standardized back, uh, back in the old days. Uh, if you look at old sheet music from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, a lot of it had ukulele chord diagrams in the printed in the music but they would suggest a tuning that would suit the key that the song was in so if a, a, a song was written in e flat for instance printed in e flat uh, they would maybe say uh, at the top of the music tune the uke b flat e flat g c that's another semitone up again so that then you would be playing your normal open chords but playing in a different key it's something that you should get into get in, uh, into experimenting with try different tunings they don't hurt unless you put too much tension on the strings <laughs> then they could hurt it could hurt your eye if the string breaks but uh, i can't give you a definite an answer anders as to who's responsible for changing everything 